it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and I'm back with another haul video. I actually have two hauls to show you. The first one is from a yard sale that I found on Wednesday. Normally they're on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, but this one they decided to open up a day early and it wasn't you know, mentioned anywhere that they were gonna do that, but they just decided to. So here it's in town. I was driving around and I seen the sign up. So I stopped over there and found quite a lot of things. So I'm gonna show you that first and let's take a look. Okay, so I got some interesting items here, a mixture of booth and online. So that's always good. Uh, right up front here, we have little flower frogs. These were a dollar a piece. They were sort of an impulse buy. I'm not sure how well these things sell, but I do like the fact that they are metal and they look old and they're very sharp as well. But they are, like I said, flower frogs. So you can put these in a vase and then you could stick your flowers in there and keep them held up nicely. They were a dollar a piece. I took a chance on it paid full price. I just like the fact that they're old, original, and cool looking. So we'll see what they see what these do. Also picked up this little toothpick holder, only 25 cents. I had to grab it for that. Beautiful shape, very clean, ready to go out to the booth. And this will probably sell for maybe four or five dollars, I hope. This I thought was adorable. It was only 50 cents and it's a little Irish, I want to call it a key box for like your wedding band, wedding ring. So it has little clovers on the side there. It's actually of a little house. And it says here on the bottom, Carrigaline Pottery Co. Cork, Ireland. So this will go online. I think it'll do pretty well there. And I love the little clovers on there as well. So very neat. I Right over here, I actually picked up this puzzle. I wouldn't have normally grabbed it, but I did notice right down here, House of Lloyd, 1989. House of Lloyd, I recall hearing about from someone, I don't know who, but I remember that name. So I looked it up real quick while I was at the yard sale and it, apparently there's one of these listed online for $29.99. So I think that, I don't know, I'm not gonna speculate, but it seems quite a lot. I only paid 50 cents. so. Um, we'll find out what I can actually sell this for. I don't know. It's in pretty good shape. And uh, I let them know at the yard sale. I was like, you know, this is gonna, this is going for like 30 bucks online. And they were like, wow, now it's a dollar fifty. No, they were joking, but um, paid 50 cents. And over here, we have some just different items. Right here, this is probably something that I took a chance on the most because it was $3. That's kind of, I hate to say that. that that's a little bit, high in my, for, what am I trying to say? For me, for this, I don't normally buy it, but I thought for the booth, at the very least, this could go for maybe 15 bucks because it is very unique. But the main reason why I bought it was, yes, the detail, how nice it looks, but also the fact that it's stamped on the bottom. It just looks very official. And it's actually made by Cal, Cal, Caldon and Bogle. And they are a product, uh, they, they make housewares. They're still operation. They're still in operation. And so one of these right now is listed on Ruby Lane for $50. I don't know much about how much it originally cost someone to buy this, but uh, we'll see what I can do. I, I'll maybe put this online, I'm not sure. If I don't, again, it's a good booth item for $3 only. Here we have a piece of false graph and I recognized it for its unreadable bottom stamp. It is uh, stamped on the bottom here. I just know that's the general rough false graph outline. And that is what their uh, creamer looks like. So very neat. Oh, and I only paid 50 cents. So this will either go online or in the booth, maybe online because I don't know, but I'm thinking that the online will have a better chance of selling. I'll have to double check the price on that. And if it's not worth it, I'll put it in the booth. Over here, we have a really cool teapot. Love this oriental coloring and everything. And it was a dollar, not marked on the bottom. Yeah, just a little teapot. And it'll go in the booth. I think I could probably get maybe eight, nine, ten dollars out of it on in the booth. I also got another teapot right here, really pretty. I love the blue, very nice. Sort of has like a Scandinavian look to it. And it was only a dollar. And it is marked here on the bottom, made in China with Chinese characters. So I just thought 
It looked really pretty. I love the little dots on the sides. I love all the extra ornamentation. And teapots sell pretty well for me in the booth. So this is again another booth item. And I don't know if you've caught on to the fact that I'm trying to buy more booth things. And that is because it's just easier. If I can buy something for literally a dollar and sell it for 12, why not? So yes, I am trying to really just treat my booth better because it's just, there's no reason I shouldn't be putting more stuff in there. So very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, the last thing I got at that particular yard sale is this really cool blanket here. I picked it up and I said, gosh, that looks like an old army blanket or something. And I, and I asked, well, actually I said, you know, to the people running it, this looks like an old army blanket. And she's like, well, that's what it is. So I was like, okay, great. I paid $4 for it. I didn't think that was too much for a blanket. And just, just as a blanket, $4 is not much, but considering it has this military uh, background to it. I think that might also help itself for a little bit more than $4. So we will see what they go for, but in, um, all in all, it's in great shape. Don't know how old it is. I should have asked that. I think it's on the older side. Oh, there's a little hole right there. I just found, I don't think that's going to hurt it too much, but uh, I should have asked. I, I could still ask. I should go back there. It's just in here in town. Um, find out a little bit more information about it because it is her husband's or was. So yes, those are some things I got at the yard sale. I think I spent $12.75, if my memory is correct. And I think I did pretty good. I just got back from the post office and in my PO box was this here and I wasn't expecting it. It's actually from a subscriber and she named Marilyn and she sent me these magazine pages and they are of Mainly, it looks like a phone and a radio uh, articles. However, I was flipping through and there's quite a bit of other things. Here's about vintage postcards and posters. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I haven't really read through all this stuff yet, but really neat. And I was, these numbers caught my eye. 500 to $5,000 for posters, depending on the rarity. It's crazy. And then this, yeah, this one here goes into the rotary phones, which I find quite often around here at estate sales and yard sales and things like that. The pink one here is one of the more desirable colors. People like pink. They also like red, if you can find a red one. I know I sold a red one for $120 on Etsy. Uh, that one may have been a little bit influenced by the fact that the buyer was a TV production company and they were buying it as a prop for a show. And generally they have higher budgets and they're not gonna sit there and price compare everything. So they actually bought, I think seven other things for me besides the phone. That was a very good sale, by the way. You know, I was gonna make a video on all the different famous people that I sold to, but it's just not, it just never really came to be. But I will say that I sold that rotary phone to the TV show Gotham. And I don't remember, I think it was probably last season or I can't keep track, but it was, it was last year, I think it was that I sold it to him. And I don't know how that plays into the seasons. So it was a red rotary phone along with a few other things that I can remember. But I also sold something to Melissa McCarthy. Actually, I sold her a hen on a nest. So that was interesting, sold something to her. And then I sold something, I sold some old camping stools to the Hulu show Castle Rock, which is on right now. Really good show if you wanna watch that. Interesting. It's a Stephen King uh, world type series. Yeah, and then we got radios here. We have like an old, I think it says Catalan, Catalan or Bakelite type radio here and I don't really ever come across ones this interesting and if I do they're probably already in a retail setting so that's neat and I can imagine that something like this would go pretty high but I would also think that it depends on the market that you're in over here locally it's you're not going to get three or four thousand dollars maybe near California or New York but it's just hard to find. I find lots of other radios besides really interesting ones like this. You know, you could find some old 1940s Bakelite, just like standard brown. Not as interesting, but they are old equally. And they're cool. 
but yeah, I mean, I've, I've came across them. They're hard to find working and in good shape because people tinker with them over the years. So this goes on to talk about all of that. And then, yes, this is about hens on nests and a few different makers of those, Westmoreland, Indiana, Imperial. And I do pick these up whenever I can. So they are pretty good sellers. They have that, and it talks about it. They go, they go into the farmhouse vibe that if you're trying to d d design that way or just country, farmhouse, all the same. Then it goes in to talk about tin toys. I don't usually buy tin toys because I don't know that market and it's actually really hard to buy these types of things around here. There are already people that know what they're doing in this field, in this realm. So they're buying them and I don't wanna pay those prices because they tend to go on the higher side at auctions and estate sales whenever I do see them. Occasionally I'll find like a little metal toy or something, but it's usually so in insignificant or I'll find like one of those music maker things and those don't actually go very high or they don't sell for very much either. Probably four or five, no more than $10 usually, unless it's a really interesting design or something. But yeah, and apparently you can find them pretty easy according to this list. But yet, talks about price ranges of up to six thousand dollars or ten to hundred and fifty. I mean, yeah, pretty interesting. And then over here, I guess this is the remainder of the hen on nest things, and it just tells you about where to find them, what types of glass are more desirable, who makes them, and where to get them. So all in all, really cool set of pages here from Marilyn. Wasn't expecting that, so it was a really fun surprise to get that in the P.O. box, and I just wanted to share it. So thanks again. All right, so I just got my third delivery from nationalsoapwholesale.com, and this is the soap that I put in my booth. So I ordered, I think, three loaves of soap along with a whole bunch of like little labels and things that I needed. Maybe I ordered four loaves. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So really excited to see what these are like. I'm definitely due to restock the soap in my booth. And let's see. Okay, so this one has autumn apples, ocean reef, pumpkin crunch cake in it. And then this one here has... Peppermint, red clover, tea, and vanilla sugar. And then I also ordered lots of extra tags and things that, that I needed. So we'll just pull these out of the box. I'm getting better at this because the first time I had everything upside down. That was a hot mess, that haul video or unboxing video. It was like, it was. you don't want to see that. All right, so we'll go with this one here first. I need a knife and we'll use this good old steak knife and hopefully we can manage okay let's see okay so here are now these are some wax bags that I ordered because I thought that it would be good to have these in the booth so that people can put the soap in the bags especially now that holidays are coming up well, actually, you wouldn't want to gift this, but I don't know. It's just a lot nicer than having to hold a waxy, soapy bar as you're walking around the mall. So, yeah, it's a nice wax bag. I don't think they were very expensive. Uh, I don't know, like 10 cents a piece, I think. I don't know. So I got quite a few of them. I'm going to guess about 100. So we'll get all those out. That. Now, unfortunately, I don't know why they do this, but you can buy the bars of soap. How pretty. You can buy the bars of soap or the loaves of soap in 13 bars, but they only will give you 10 tags. I don't understand. But you can buy more tags if you need to. However, you have to buy them in quantity of 10. So I had to buy 10 more of each of these tags. So we have uh, Ocean Reef. I do love the fact that they give you tags. 
That way I don't have to worry about it. And they are unbranded too. It just says handmade soap with olive oil and shea butter. So let's take a, a smell, shall we? I don't know how hard this will be to get. Here, we'll pull the paper out first. So this one is autumn apples. This will be good for the autumn. Okay. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that smells really great. <sighs> yeah, so it has kind of a cinnamony apple smell to it with a touch of like a floral scent to most with it. So that's nice. Uh, this one here is Old Faithful. It does really well in my booth. It is called Ocean Reef. And the color of this is just really pretty. As you can see, it's like a green and blue. And this one just has a real nice soapy smell to it. Yep. This one I'm very excited about, Pumpkin Crunch Cake. So let's see. Now you can also get these where they're not natural as they call it on the tops. This is more of a natural top, not smooth. They actually cost more if you want them to be smooth. So I like the natural looking tops to them and I like that they're cheaper. So, ooh, that is beautiful. Oh, this smells really great. It smells a lot to me like a banana nut bread with a good nutty cinnamony undertone to it. So that's pumpkin crunch cake and it doesn't exactly say what the fragrances are, but that's the best I can make out. Very nice, very folly, folly. So I'll put my little things there. Okay, next box. So yeah, I guess I ordered six loaves. The thing about this is you have to order at least $125 worth in order to get free shipping. And I'm all about that free shipping. So I will order what I need to. Okay. In here, this is interesting. This almost has like a translucent glycerin look to it. So where are my, oh, is this upside down? Well, okay. Let's see. Here are all the extra tags that I had to buy because I have loaves downstairs in a little Tupperware that I couldn't put out because I didn't have tags with my original orders. So these will help get it so that I can put those other bars out. And it's literally just like three bars of each of the scents. This one looks like a peppermint to me. I really do think the tag is on the bottom of this. See, they usually put, I guess they decided not to do it that way. Well, this one looks like peppermint. It smells like peppermint. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's definitely peppermint and it's a very strong aromatic peppermint. Oh, yeah. Very good. So I ordered this one because of like Christmas and all that. They do have a, like, I think it's called candy cane or some kind of holiday themed version. And it's a little bit more prettier, more pretty, but it is also a special order where you have to order like, I don't know, nine loaves at a time or something like that. You can't just order one loaf of it. So unfortunately I can't do that. Now I don't know what this one is. I can't, oh, wait a minute. It's set on the box. This is probably red clover leaf tea, this middle one here. And very nice. I like the color, I like the swirl. That's really nice. Um, it, okay. This one reminds me of a fabric sheet. Yep, definitely. Like a fabric, soft uh, fabric sheet you put in the dryer. So that's, that's weird. I wasn't, I didn't know what this would actually smell like, so. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, exactly like, and I can't remember what brand it is, but you know, the m name brand of fabric sheets, it's, it's that same exact scent. This one here is vanilla sugar. And uh, I like to, ca I thought this would be good for fall and it's just a good stand-in scent. Yeah, it smells nice, vanilla sugar. Um, it's a lot like the other vanilla I think it's, what is it, vanilla bean, or I have another vanilla scent in the booth. And this is really, really, really similar to that. 
probably should have not have got this one because actually the other vanilla scent that I have isn't doing so great. Oh, it's vanilla oat, oat, um, oatmeal. Vanilla oatmeal is in, is in the booth currently. And that one's not selling quite as much. Um, I just figured that for the fact that it had oatmeal in it, the one that's currently in the booth, it would have done better because some people like to have that moisturizing quality of oatmeal, you know, especially in the winter. So we'll see how these go, but I've got all these tags. So now I can uh, put all of these out in the booth and the extra ones that I have in my downstairs, I can refill what I have that's going low. Oh my gosh, I didn't order any lavender. What? Lavender is actually one of my big sellers right now. That's, hmm, okay, why? Why did I not do that? Well, that's okay. So I guess this is all the bags that I got. That should be around 100, I'm assuming. But uh, these, these should come in handy for the booth. And I just, yeah, I wanted to show off the soaps so you could see what I got. Um, just so if you're curious, vanilla sugar, red clover tea. Okay, so these are the ones that I needed more of in this particular order, but already I have pear and redwood in the booth. Peppermint is in there, ocean reef. Lavender is currently in my booth. Gardenia is in my booth. That one does not sell very well. It's more of a floral, um, perfumey floral kind of a scent. Apples and Blossoms currently in my booth. It does pretty good as well. Banana Berry Almond, also a great one in my booth. Autumn Apples is in this one. Angel is also in my booth, and it smells um, very nice. I can't really describe the scent of that one, but it's a very good one. Vanilla Sugar again. Hmm. Um, yeah. Red Clover Tea again, and peppermint. Yeah, I needed two of all of these because I had to, like I said, it only comes in 10 of these and there's 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then, and then it also comes with a partial one. So that's partial. That's not even a full bar. And this little bit right here is a partial one, not a full bar, but there are 13 full pieces in there and only 10 labels. I don't know why they do that. Okay, so for round two on the table, we've got some items that I picked up at some yard sales and then also at that uh, flea market place that I've been going to. We're going to start right over here. Uh, back here, I got a bun warmer. thought this was really interesting. I like the fact that it says buns, so it's self-identifying. And it's just aluminum. It's made by Miro. I think I paid $2 for it. can't remember all the way because she took all the prices the prices off of them. So very neat. Love a good bun warmer. <laughs> so yes, this will either go in the booth or online. I'm not sure yet. I do know that there is an appeal for this stuff here locally. Just don't know monetarily which one's better for me. Over here, I got these really cool dogs. I love them. So I love the fact that they're chain animals. I love picking up chain animals. I'm not sure why his nose is missing so much. Look at that. Well, it's not missing the color, but it just looks like it's missing the color because it's white. And this one here has, well, you know, you know, he looks a little weird. Okay, so we got these chained dogs, very cool. These were only $2, fantastic price. This kind of stuff I sell on Etsy and they'll go well, this one, for the fact that it's dogs, might do better than even the cats because I mostly find cats. So, and it's sort of a rarer type of breed. I find a lot of poodles if I ever do find dogs. Uh, this one will probably go 40 or $50, and it's in really nice shape. So, awesome find. And um, I just love picking up chained animals like that, the little families. Uh, right here, got this really cool, this was $2. It's Appears to be an old ointment or cosmetic container. Loved the marble top, the plastic on there, and uh, just a little dirty. You gotta wash it off. There's not much writing on it to kind of identify the history. It looks to me like there would have been a label right here that would have been what it is. And you can almost tell that for the fact that the plastic is nicer in the center, uh, brighter green and all that. So, 
maybe with a little research I'll find out. I pay $2 for it just because I don't run across stuff like this very often and I just wanted to have it in my life for a little bit to see what was going on. So neat, neat stuff, nice milk glass. It honestly looks older to me. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's not like a Avon new thing that they brought back. It, it does look older to me, just with some of this wear that I'm seeing on the plastic, which could be Bakelite. Uh, so that's cool. Over here, I grabbed these two. They're not vintage, they're not old. They are Yankee Candle candle toppers. And if you buy these new, they're about $10 a piece. I figured that I could sell them together. I think these are adorable. I love the Christmas one. I love the Halloween one, beautiful. These were only 50 cents a piece. So I just had to get them. And uh, yeah, I'll probably sell them together. Maybe I can get 14 bucks online for them. Maybe with shipping 18, I don't know. I have to do a little research, but they are cool. And I don't really burn candles myself anymore just because of the, I forgot the word, that the stuff that the smoke does. Yeah, that stuff. So also, let's see, oh, and from that same yard sale, I got this little Chinatown New York ashtray. Love the color, love the design, really cool. These are souvenir ashtrays and they don't sell for extreme amount online, maybe $10, $15. Also, let's see, um, now we're going back over here. This, uh, this and this I picked up at the flea market. That was after the yard sales. This was a mistake. It has missing half of its horn. So, or is that what it's called, horn? I don't know. But it's a music thingy that makes music when you turn it. Uh, this will just probably be destined for the booth, unfortunately, I paid a dollar for it. If the horn was not broke, this would be a fantastic online item for upwards of, at, at the most, 30 bucks, I would bet you. Uh, so, pretty cool. Also grabbed another one of these Bromwell uh, uh, sifters, sugar things, flour things, whatever. But uh, it's a measuring sifter, black handle, was a dollar. So I'll put this in the booth for maybe six to eight dollars. Just an easy little thing. Uh, also at a yard sale picked up these. These are salt and pepper shakers of birdies and they have cork bottoms on them. And these were $2 for the pair. Um, and they are marked Japan, what's left of the sticker. So these will probably go online. I like the subject matter and the quality is there. So that's cool. All right, we've got through all of that. Also at the yard sale, I picked up these two games. I don't normally buy games, but thought why not. This one here is the game of Cootie. I've sold this one in my booth before, but maybe this one will go online. The one I sold in my booth was in worse, worse off shape, but there it is. I don't know if it's all there, but there's the instructions and it's made in 1949. So that's awesome on the age. So I picked up that. Uh, each game was, I don't know, a dollar or two. I don't remember. This one here, oh nuts. Oh, nuts. 1969 Ideal Toy. And uh, I don't know. I don't know much about this game, but there's things inside of nuts, and I guess these people are very happy to find them. Wow. So there's the stuff. 19, like I said, 1969. I will, we'll find out what this does online. I'm not looking forward to shipping this. That's one reason I don't buy games, because of their enormity. Like, just imagine trying to figure how to ship that, uh, finding a box and all, you know. But I will, tr I'll, I'll try. All right, also at the yard sale, just a little incidental thing. I picked these up for a dollar for the pair of them. They are plastic, uh, like stands that you could put some information in. I figure for the booth, these would come in handy eventually if I ever need to have some sort of a thing to tell people and uh, great little display item. This here is actually destined for the bedroom. It'll be a great light to hang over my side of the bed, which is closest to the door. So it'll sort of, uh, I don't know what it'll do, but it'll just look nice. And it has that white uh, rattan, what's that called? Caning, I don't know. And so it has this chain, it's been cut, and the owner of the flea market cut it because it was already screwed up and apparently um, it was marked for $4, but I didn't want to pay $4. I wanted to pay two. And since the cord was screwed up and it would have had to have been replaced, he just figured he might as well cut the cord and scrap it himself. 
Uh, I don't scrap things, so he can do that. I don't care, but it's copper wiring, so that's why he wanted to deal with it.